Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to cold, snowy Moscow. Yes, I'm right in Red Square. You can hear the uh, Kazan Cathedral's bells going off. Now where I want to go is right behind me, Gum Department Store. Now it looks a little bit bright, yeah? The lights are on. It's only 5 p.m. and it's dark already, so we're going to go in and check it out. So let's go. Now I kind of was hoping to wait till these chimes stop chiming, but they've been going off for about 10 minutes now. So I'm going to brave through it and uh, keep filming. Such as television, right? You've got to keep filming. So yeah, Kazan Cathedral right here. And then we'll see Nikulskaya Street right in front of us. I've dimmed it down a little bit so it's a bit easy to see because it's so bright, the lights of Gum Department Store. Now, fortunately we can't really see Red Square today because they're setting up the ice skating rink and the Christmas markets, which are right behind all these fences. But as we spin back around, Gum is definitely right there, it's open. We can even see the lights of Louis Vuitton, although Louis Vuitton has left Russia. Their lights are still on and you can see the amount of people about, even for early in the evening here, but everybody wants to see these lights. Get some nice photos. We're gonna head on inside to get warm. Okay, so let's head on inside, shall we? Let's catch these revolving doors. Now, hopefully, we're gonna see some nice decorations here now. What I understood was they've set them up ahead of time for New Year. So have a look at these kind of sleds up here, kind of suspended in midair, I guess you would call it. And then we'll see all of the kind of famous luxury stores here on the left and right hand side. Fairly sure that uh, Canal is now closed. Canal. Or should we call it, call it Chanel? What do you think? There's a little souvenir shop here. I'm not too sure how busy this lady is, but she mostly has stuff from the Bolshoi, which is kind of interesting. Let's see Van Cleef and Arpels. So this is probably considered the most luxurious shopping mall in Russia. Now, of course, it's right here in the middle of Moscow center here, right by Red Square, right by the Kremlin, Nikolskaya Street. It's uh, kind of interesting when you walk around because essentially 99% of people here aren't shopping. They're just coming for a nosy, exactly like I'm doing. Here is Bosco on the left here, which is kind of a very well known store in Moscow for having a lot of the uh, Russian themed, kind of like Olympic clothing, I guess you could call it, or sports clothing. It's a very nice store inside. They've got all of their winter gear set up now. And you'll see everybody's uh, pretty well rugged up because it's probably minus five outside. So with the cold, it's probably closer to minus nine, minus 10 today. So, yeah, have a look. They uh, tend to do the decorations very nice here. They don't make them gaudy and kind of very cheesy that you'd sort of sometimes think of for Christmas and New Year. But now the one thing here, there is a lot of closed stores. This is Vasher and Constantine, which is one of the well-known uh, watch and jewelry brands. And have a look at this. Oh, the Rasputi. Hello. Oh, there's a wedding. Probably they're coming for some photographs, I think. How beautiful is this? Oh, so nice. Oh, I think they come inside to get warm like we did. A lot of people will go and do the uh, wedding ceremony and then they'll, very typically like anywhere in the world, go and get photographs. But they've got to kind of brave the uh, colder weather. Here is Guki, or Gucci. I'm sorry, I'm kind of making a little bit of fun of the names, but this is also closed. The one thing that's interesting is, although these stores are all closed, they're all 
impeccably clean and tidy. Everything is exactly in place like the shop should be open, and it's not. Here is Kata, or is this Cartier? I call it Kata. Uh, this is another luxury brand. If you're watching from around the world and you don't know these brands, it's completely understandable. I mean, please don't assume that you know all the brands or you think you do or you don't. And actually this place looks completely empty. You'll see the, uh, all of the uh, merchandise is gone from the store, but all the lights are still on. And then we'll keep walking around a little bit further, shall we? So they have some New Year stuff already set up here. I was a little bit surprised uh, when I just came across this right around the corner, but these are mostly ornaments for the trees, which is very, very nice. And then the guys working here are sporting their scarves here for the colors of the brand. But how nice are these? They're uh, probably a little bit expensive, but I guess we're in Gum, we're in Bosco, but very, very nice. Now, this is the bit I really wanted to show you here, this middle kind of island of Gum. Gum's kind of separated into three alleys. So we're kind of just walking out of the first one into the middle one now. And then there's a third one way behind this very beautiful tree. Check out all of these things. Look at this music box right here. How neat is that? It looks like a music box. Yeah, this is very nice. These are kind of like the super fancy Christmas ornaments. All of the uh, things set up here. Uh, Gum does this every year around the holidays, so it's very well known that a lot of people will come to find new ornaments for their trees and on something that's kind of everlasting. These aren't really the, the ones that we saw in Ashan where they're kind of used once and might end up falling off, but have a look at the tree here. This is actually huge. It's kind of about four levels, I would say. If we count how high this building is, it's really a very big uh, building. Now, if you've watched other videos that I've made here, you'll probably know that I've uh, been here in summertime and autumn time and they changed this. This is normally a big water fountain right here, right in the middle. And they, uh, in summertime, they've got all the fruits and they put all the watermelons in the water fountain. And then there's some people that are selling chopped uh, fruits right here. And there's everybody uh, looking for new ornaments. Uh, there is quite a lot of people in here, but again, I'll stress it a lot that probably the big majority of people in here are just coming in for a walk around and get out of the cold and have a look here. Here is Christian Dior. Now, the interesting thing with a lot of the brand perfumes is although they've sort of said they've left Russia, this is Arti Koli here on the right. Artikol. It's a kind of a multi-branded perfume store, which obviously continues to trade with all the brands in. You'll see here all of these different brands. And it's actually a huge perfume store. It's basically both sides of this middle island here. And literally every brand under the sun in perfume brands are represented in this store. Have a look at these kind of uh, trees right here. I just think it's, you can just walk through here and just, you don't have to say anything really. I know I'm doing the voice over here, but there's not a lot of voice needed really. Have a look at some of these other things here on display. They've got all these, I guess they're hares or they're rabbits. I've been corrected a few different times by everybody that they're hares. I think they're rabbits, but that's just me. There's uh, lots of people. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of a tradition to come here ahead of New Year and find the new ornament for the tree. Everybody's kind of coming to choose something. 
It's hard to kind of look away from this tree. I know it doesn't probably look so big on the camera, but right where I'm standing here, it's massive. So I just thought I'd get a little bit closer to these very big Christmas baubles here. They're about the size of a grapefruit. Now, I just looked a little bit closer. It's 12,500 rubles. So, what's that, about 200 and something US dollars? But they're very big there. And I would imagine these are hand painted, just looking at them. Very spectacular. Have a look at the crowds. Hope you can feel like there's crowds in here. I think it's uh, possible just walking around. So there is a couple of different cafes in here as well. There's a couple on this lower level that we'll kind of just walk past here. And then there is a few on the upstairs level, which we'll get to eventually. But if you literally want to have some tea and coffee about as central to Moscow as you can, this would be the spot you'd stop in. Now, just ahead of me here is probably the most considered, you know, in terms of luxurious supermarkets right here. Now, this would have to be a completely separate video, so let me know in the comments if you want me to do a bit of a walkthrough of this supermarket because it kind of stretches the whole length of the, the mall here. And it's a, it's a very neat place, let me say. This is the Beluga Bar. I'm pretty sure they're not serving whale, but I know they serve the, the vodka and caviar. It's uh, the house for tea. <laughs> Hello. Um, see everybody's friendly and waving and smiling. We'll see the other side of this uh, perfume and cosmetic store here. And all of this sort of themed decorations. They change these about every three months. So depending on the kind of season, essentially, they'll change it. It's uh, very nice. Now, walking around Goom, I didn't really want to make this video about empty stores and all the brands have left. I really want to walk through this place and just sort of feel the new year and the Christmas season, I guess. Uh, it's still a little bit early for the ice skating rink outside to be open. They're about a, I think they're about another week away from opening but just trying to get the feeling about everybody here in Moscow center as we walk around. Somebody did ask in the comments about, can you go to an optician's or a lens crafter's and make a video now? I will try to find one which will be a little bit more easier to kind of walk in and have a look at. This is mostly kind of all the upscale, super fancy frame brands in that store right there, but as we walk around, We'll see here, Furler is open. It's a pretty well-known handbag and accessory company. I guess I'm just uh, not so uh, fashion conscious myself. Uh, know all these different brands. Let's check out what they're serving. How are they doing? Are they doing donuts or ice cream? Oh, I think they're, no, they're doing this pretzels, I think. I think it's pretzels. Check that out. We can see the lady doing it right there. It doesn't look like a pretzel right now, but I guess it will be eventually. Now walking around in here, it's uh, I, I like coming here. I know I wouldn't really walk into any stores and go shopping. You know, very typically everybody that you see in this video today come here just for a walk a bit of nostalgia for the old building. They come to look at the Christmas displays. Really aren't planning to come shopping at all. Uh, now probably, if you've ever been to Moscow and you've been to Gum, one of the big reasons to come here is this ice cream. Now, it's only 100 rubles, so, what's that, about a dollar 50 or so, dollar 30? And they've got these, oh, thank you. Oh, you know from the channel? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's Good. nice to meet you Thank personally. you. Yeah, wow, that's really lucky that you came across. I do always feel when I'm walking around here like it's kind of like an advertisement for all the companies. And, you know, maybe they sell something, maybe they don't, but the brands get that recognition from being 
right here in this main shopping center in the center of Moscow. And you know, the amount of people that would kind of walk through here would be, you know, in the thousands per day. I really like to these old escalators here now. Of course, they're modernized now, but just that wooden kind of look to them. There's just something about it that's uh, kind of gives you that original sort of feel of this shopping center way back when it first opened. And then coming up to this second level here, it just gets even more spectacular. Just walking around, man, I don't really have a lot to say when I come to this place. I think just the building itself kind of speaks for itself. Now this big glass domed roof, and there's essentially three of these over each kind of span of the building. They're just enormous how big they are. And obviously now with the winter kind of coming on, it's a little bit darker earlier. Here is Louis Vuitton, which of course they've left. Now I never noticed this before because I don't tend to walk down this end too much. But Louis Vuitton had its own cafe right here with this kind of prime view. But has anybody seen a Louis Vuitton cafe before? That would be pretty uh, interesting to, uh, I don't know, have a cup of tea in there. Is it any different to other places? The Louis Vuitton store looks a little bit empty as well. All they really need to do is just put the stock back on the shelves and reopen. I mean, will that happen? I don't know. I mean, that's another story altogether, but you know, it's uh, kind of makes this end of the uh, goom a little bit emptier, I guess, without the kind of people passing by here. But it's still nice though. Walking through also, they've got these kind of display set up of, you know, what people maybe lived like way back when in Russia here. And obviously these are all mannequins, I know that, but you know, this kind of look of the, uh, the household, the kids and the parents right there. There's another one over here that's uh, kind of the dinner table, I guess, for New Year. And it's the lady, she doesn't look, looks a little bit, uh, she's not so happy. I don't know, maybe everyone's not here yet for dinner. But she's got everything kind of set out and in place, but they kind of create these kind of looks of what a Russian house might have looked like. As we keep walking back towards the center again, I really want to see this tree a little bit higher up. Um, I think it's just very spectacular. It's, again, they tend to do these very specific themes for the holidays here. And just that kind of blue and white look. And there's actually a bike retailer down here, which has quite a lot of electric bikes. These are the kind of very fancy, kind of looking retro ones. I've never seen one on the streets anywhere in Moscow. I don't know where people ride them or what they do with them, but there's a salesman there at the ready. And here we can see the tree again and all of the kind of little shops around it. You can see there's a lot of people in here. It really is kind of like selfie heaven though. Everybody's coming for a photograph and a new updated New Year picture. It's, uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> I'm not going to kind of laugh about it, but it's just a funny thing, I think, for everybody that might live in Moscow, Moscow region, you know. But let's go to Gum, but, you know, we're just going to have a walk through and, you know, uh, feel like we can afford to shop here. I'm, I'm very much Moscow or Blast, Moscow region guy. I don't live here in the center, but I've got to get that feeling when I come in here, like I, I kind of belong. And you can see all the girls love to get their photo taken here by the tree. It's kind of the thing to do. Come and uh, wear the nice jacket and purse and come and get the photo taken. Now, I'm just remembering somebody mentioned actually a few times in the comments, you know, everybody's so nicely dressed. Nobody's on their phones. Everybody's sort of very social and very, you know, uh, normal looking. And then when I come to walk around the middle of the tree here, essentially, 
every person's got their phone out. Everyone's obviously taking photos, but uh, it's kind of the, the thing to do, you know, uh, especially around the tree at New Year's time. Okay, I've made it up to the top level. We can see again this nice, huge, huge, huge roof. Now it's getting a little bit darker outside. It kind of makes it look even more spectacular, doesn't it? All these kind of decorations. Now, I thought we'd have a look around Stolova 57. Now, again, if you were watching this for the first time and you've never been to Moscow, this is a very, very famous uh, cafe here in Gum. Now, we might walk through in reverse here we'll have a look because at the moment the line is out the door and down the corridor there's probably about 50 people in line to get inside so let's just sort of spin around we'll actually go in there backwards and at least we'll kind of have a look at the place but they've got a little bit of a cafeteria here where you can get tea and coffee and cakes we can't quite see them which is a bit of a shame but now, what's very famous about this place is the fact that it's, you know, sit down table service. You've got the, the tablecloths, the knives and forks. It's kind of the original Soviet canteen or stolova. It's, uh, I've eaten here a few times, uh, actually quite a few times, because it's right in Red Square. You can feel like you're dining amongst the rich and famous, yet we're still in a very basic stolova here, but this is kind of the luxury version of what the canteens look like. You can still go to the original ones around Moscow. Now we're not quite gonna see the food, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, you'll see here, they've got the kitchens all in the back. Yeah, kind of everybody's crowded over all of the different glass, uh, kind of serveries, so we can't <laughs> kind of uh, find a, an opening to show some of the different foods here, but they've got salads, there's juices, uh, all the cakes over here, and then essentially the line wraps around, <laughs> keeps on going, and it wraps right the way around the uh, entrance here, and it's probably, it's about 20, 30 minutes the rest for tea. <laughs> but uh, very, it's, it's nice food. I can see. <laughs> We're impatient when we get hungry, right? <laughs> but uh, now everybody's uh, kind of happy having a look here, choosing the food. The only thing is what I find when I've come here is you kind of fill up your tray with all the salads and cakes at the beginning. And then when you get to all the hot food, you can't decide what you want by then. Uh, and then over here, you've just got the checkout and there's some drinks and they've got the original kind of uh, Russian brands up the top there. Unfortunately though, they've also got Dobro Cola here, which is the relabeled Coca-Cola, but uh, they've got enough choices, teas and coffees as well. And then if you really don't want to wait and don't want to line up, <laughs> there's a more basic version here of a Stolova, which is really kind of the classic Stolova looking here. Very inexpensive food as well. Salads, pasta, there's some shashlik there, but not quite as fancy. We're lacking the tablecloths and things like that, but if you want to dine in Red Square, if you want to dine in Goom, you come upstairs here. It's a bit of a secret uh, amongst most uh, Moscovites. They're not going to overly tell everybody to come up here because it's a bit of a secret cafe up on this top level. But it's very basic dining, comfy chairs, nice and warm, and you can go about your day. Now I've had lots of comments about can you film in a pharmacy? Now unfortunately today, I'm not gonna be able to film in this one because I was just having a look on their signs out the front and it says no cameras right here. Also no dogs, no hamburgers, 
and I'm not sure where you'd get your shopping trolley from, but this is a Russian Anteka or pharmacy in Gum. I really like this upstairs level because it's not as many people, so it's a little bit easier to walk around. Now that it's getting darker too, it kind of gets more kind of like moody with the lighting once the, uh, the sky kind of darkens and then this, uh, the lights kind of take over in here. It's a very nice feeling. And then just looking down from this upper level again, you can see one of the other cafes uh, kind of right in front of me here. It's a uh, nice sit down dining, uh, mostly uh, cafe style, but uh, got a nice view at the same time. And then there's another cafe up here on this upper level, which if you've watched my summertime walkthrough of this place, I might have pointed this out, I think. But this is another very basic cafe, which is kind of hidden away from everybody. So if you kind of come in here as a tourist or someone that may not live in Moscow, you would never get up to this third level possibly and you wouldn't know this other cafe exists Italian cooking now I wonder if there's a the guy there with the mustache I don't quite think so but um, you've got the uh, kind of cafeteria style again and all the food choices here salads and pastas and there's some nice uh, cakes over here and this must be the Italian element, the pizza. Check that out there. Now, I don't see the guy from the picture out the front there, but they've got the pizza oven for sure. Here's another little view from this upper level here again. There's not too many shops up here. I think this might be their kind of storage for some of the shops, I would imagine. This kind of corner here doesn't get as much kind of traffic of people walking by, but you can see downstairs, everybody walking up and down the alleyways. So I do hope you're enjoying this walk around of Goom. Maybe it's a little bit longer than maybe other videos you've watched before of this, but it's kind of how I see it and what I see. And I've pointed that out in a lot of videos before. So I hope it comes across as kind of something interesting and enjoyable and just the view of a Russian department store by myself, Russell. And as you know, I'm from Australia, so we've got nothing like this in Australia to compare it with. So, you know, coming in here, it's just mind blowing me in terms of just how big it is and how beautiful it is. So coming back downstairs again to this lower level, there's another kind of a holiday store. I keep persisting to want to say Christmas store, but I guess more of a New Year's store here in Russia is more of the uh, traditionally celebrated holiday, I guess. A lady here with kind of like blankets. I think these are, I guess, handmade blankets of some kind. And there's some, um, somebody here with the, uh, I guess these are cookie, cookies on a stick. I don't know what the name of these are, but uh, gingerbread. Yes, the gingerbread. Thank you. I was gonna check, ask you in the comments what it is, but now I figured it out. Now, when you first walk in to Gum, there is almost one thing you need to do, and it's line up right here. Now, you're not lining up for a shop. You're not lining up for a cafeteria. You're lining up for some ice cream. Now, outside today is about minus five, minus six. So real feels about minus 10, this is Celsius. But you come on inside here and they've got ice creams by this wonderful gentleman here. Gum is serving these ice creams exactly like they did for, I don't know, 50 years or longer, but they're only a hundred rubles, which is about a dollar 50 or so. But everybody's waiting patiently like we all do in Russia. We all have to line up for things in Russia, no matter what it is, catch the bus, we line up for everything, but that's the entrance right there. And we walk straight in and we come for ice cream. Now I thought I'd point out some of the other brands here. There's some of the watch brands. Here is Longines. And my point of this little part of the video is, is actually to talk about some of the brands 
that have left Russia. Now, this is actually a store called Sublime, which is kind of a multi-brand store that has all of the watch companies and their watches. So where a lot of brands have said they've left Russia, we've still got here Breitling, and then here is Arado, if anyone knows these brands. Maybe uh, you own one of the watch brands, I'm not sure, but... And then here is uh, Tag Heuer, or Tag Hauer, Tag Heuer. This is kind of interesting. Have a look at the size of these door handles. They're just uh, huge door handles. And we'll see more of the Tag Heuer brand over here as well. But this is, uh, Tag Heuer is part of Louis Vuitton, which has said that they've entirely pulled out of Russia, but yet, we see them here in the watch stores uh, in full display and over on the other side here is the kind of completely standalone Rolex store and how Rolex like to promote their brand. They've got an entire window here. How big is this? And then just two watches in there. Okay, everybody, we've come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the walk around GUM. Now, for any eagle-eyed viewers, you might recognize that I'm not in GUM. My battery kind of died right in the last few minutes. And I didn't see it before I had a chance to plug my uh, spare battery in or my, what do they call these, power banks. So I actually just came to another shopping center close by to charge up my phone for a little while. And I found this sort of underground uh, food court, which is, uh, it's like a food market. It's actually a very nice place. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, lots more videos to come. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, it's completely up to you. Post some comments, let me know what you think. Have you had the ice cream at Gum before? Have you been shopping there before? Maybe just come for a walk around like I do all the time. So yeah, thanks everybody for coming traveling with Russell. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye everybody. Now in a few of my other videos, I've kind of done bonus footage at the end. So if you stuck around, Let's see if you might mention these things in the comments, but this is the food court that I came across here. It's kind of a, kind of a food market or mark, uh, I forgot what they call it in Moscow. There's a certain name for these kind of upscale food courts, but what I want to show you is Windstrike here. Now, this is kind of on the minus level of this shopping mall that I came into, but it's a LAN gaming center. Now, I don't want to talk too loud, but everyone's got headphones on, so they probably won't even know I'm walking through here. But there is, I'm going to say literally, hundreds of computers in here. And everybody's doing, I guess, some kind of LAN gaming. Uh, it's very dark, of course. Obviously, it's just perfect for people on their computers. But they've got a stadium over here, or a mini stadium. And they host, uh, like, one-on-one -on -one competitions. But... There's a whole lot of people kind of almost yelling at their microphones or their headsets. But how cool is this? A LAN gaming center. Now, I reckon there's probably 200 computers in here and I'm being a bit probably, uh, you know, realistic. I don't know, maybe there's 300, but this is a pretty neat place. It's kind of like the, the underground of Moscow here, but it's right in this lower level of this shopping center where this food court was, check it out. So yeah, if you mention this in the comments, I know you've watched to the end.